of Agustina Doric and uh, I am in charge of the state aid portfolio of the Academy of European Law, ERA. This is the 30 years, 30 cases podcast series, uh, a project aimed at marking the 30th anniversary of ERA by presenting 30 landmark cases of the Court of Justice of the European Union since the creation of ERA in 1992. The judgment uh, that we will present to you in the current podcast is from May 1997 and was delivered by the Court of Justice in the case Textil Werke Degedorf versus Commission. Uh, in this important judgment, uh, the Court of Justice affirmed the so-called Degendorf principle. Uh, this is a principle that has been integrated in subsequent state aid uh, rules and decisions and uh, has been seen supplied systematically by the European Commission in state aid proceedings. We will learn more about this case uh, and about the Degendorf principle by Judge Viktor Kroschitz from the General Court of the European Union, who will provide us uh, with the background of the case uh, and the fundamental statements of the judgment, and will explain its importance for the development of state aid law. This case is about a state aid dispute between the European Commission and Germany on state aid granted by Germany to a Bavarian textile producing company. Textilwerke Degendorf was involved in the production of synthetic fiber in a period in which this branch of the industry was in serious difficulties in Europe. Germany granted first a, a certain amount of state aid to uh, Textilwerke Degendorf in the early 80s without an approval of the Commission. Later on, there was a procedure on that before national courts, which led to a different state aid case, to which I will come later on. In the case I will now refer, uh, the com commun Commission disputed with Germany legality and compatibility of state aid in the second and in the third branch of granting. In this situation, uh, in a sector in which was in serious difficulties, normally state aid is generally forbidden. However, exceptionally, it is possible to grant state aid. Now, the second branch of state aid, which was already adapted to these measures in force in the Union in those times, community, the Commission could adopt a positive decision allowing the grant of this aid. But necessarily, the second branch of state aid had to be granted under the condition that those uh, sums which have been granted before with the first branch must be recovered by Germany. So the decision was a bit complicated and at first sight even contradictory because first it said that the second branch of state aid is compatible, but it was of course bound on the condition that the first state aid, which was not legal and which was not compatible with the state aid, be recovered by Germany. The German uh, authorities already started the recovery procedure, but still, Although it was conditional, Textilia Kedekendorf was not, of course, not happy about this second decision. So it went to court. There was a, an application before the general court, which then followed by an appeal. And the appeal judgment is the judgment which we will speak about today. Its number is C. 355 from 95. The judgment is in two parts interesting. The first considers procedural issues and the second issues of content. As I mentioned, the one part of the judgment concerns procedural issues. It's paragraph 21, which says that in assessing the operative part of a decision 
of the Commission followed by a decision or a judgment of the General Court, the operative part always has to be analyzed together with the reasoning which is to be found in the decision, respectively in the judgment of General Court. This is a general principle which has been repeated in various judgments following uh, the publication of the judgment in C. Uh, 355 from 1995. It means that the operative part, even if at first look might be seen as being in itself contradictory, if it is explained in the reasoning why uh, the operative part has two different sentences, these must be a sufficient explanation. So there must be always a control of the operative part on the basis of the reasoning which was given. The second point of this element, which is also very important in regard to the later following uh, jurisprudence of both European courts, says in principle, and just summarized in a very brief way, that if measures of state aid are examined by the European Commission, the European Commission always must take into account all kinds of granting to the same beneficiary. So it is not sufficient to look at the branches in a singular way. It is always very important to look at the total amount of aid granted as long as this is not recovered. And this exactly, this was the reasoning why the um, second decision of the Commission, which was the subject matter of the appeal and was the subject matter of case C-359-95 is so important. Because in this case, the decision of the Commission concerned aid, which was granted, but it was granted without having fully recovered the first amount which was granted without any kind of permission or approval of the European Commission. So repeatedly in cases in which the Commission took similar decisions, there was always a necessity to recur and to uh, quote the basic reasonings of the Court of Justice in case TWD Textilwerke Deckendorf. Uh, therefore, in many cases, in particular in cases in which member states appealed against decision of the Commission in state aid, this jurisprudence became a coherent and recurring uh, jurisprudence of the Court of Justice on state aid. Well, um, there was one particularly interesting case on state aid in which it played an elementary role. And that was a case, um, C-110-2002, uh, Commission versus Council. This case is particularly interesting because it is a dispute between institutions, which is not a very common phenomenon. So instead of one member state, attacking a commission decision. In this case, it was the commission which had to attack the council. The case was about subsidies in Portugal granted to producers of meat, in particular pork. Portugal granted some aid to the producer of pork. And later on, on the basis of the decision of the commission, which did not approve that state aid, it had to be recovered. After the recovery of measures, Portugal decided to establish a scheme for compensation for those um, farmers who produced uh, pork from pigs. And this measure, second measure, which was a compensation for a state aid which had to be recovered, is obviously also a measure containing state aid. 
So Portugal, in order to avoid difficulties with the Commission, chose a different way. It applied to the Council and asked an approval of the Council. All that, what I'm now speaking about, is foreseen in the treaty. You just have to look at Article 108, second paragraph. In exceptional circumstances, the Council is allowed to approve state aid unanimously. And that happened in the present case as well. The Council, in fact, approved the compensation scheme for farmers in Portugal who had to recover state aid they received previously. As is, as it is, of course, evident that in such a case, the state aid compensation also is state aid. So the approval by the Council was actually in approval a measure which is foreseen in Article 108, second paragraph, but only exceptionally. The argument of the Commission in the court proceeding was that actually, in this case, the Council was not competent to take such a decision. This mainly because it was annulling the effects of the first decision of the Commission. But the Council cannot be allowed to do something like that. The Council is not a court. So there is a kind of monopoly of the Commission to decide about the compatibility of state aid. The Commission did it. And in case somebody is not satisfied with the decision of the Commission, or if a member state finds it is illegal, then it is not allowed to go the way via the Council. It has to attack the decision uh, in front of the courts, mainly general court and uh, the Court of Justice. In this case, again, when deciding about the application of the Commission directed against the Council, the Court of Justice had to come back to the general principles of its jurisprudence in textile Kedegendorf. The Court again quoted paragraphs 25, 26, 27 of the Textilwerk Kedegendorf jurisprudence, arguing the Council should have taken into account whatever in the same case concerning the same measures happened before. And what happened before, it was a decision of the Commission. So what I wanted to demonstrate was that the Textilwerk Degendorf jurisprudence had to be applied and had a major effect on the later jurisprudence on state aid, even in cases in which it was not a standard case between a beneficiary and the Commission or between a member state which wants to grant, grant them aid and the Commission. That was really a novelty, the decision of the Court of Justice in case C-110-2002 was a novelty and it was substantially very important to clarify whether the Council could be asked to take a decision on something on which there was already a decision of the Commission which, in addition, was already definitive. Whenever we speak about the case Textilwerk and Degendorf, we have to keep in mind that there is a second very important case which also figures under this name, and that is the case <coughs> C-188 from 1992, again, TWD Textilwerke Degendorf. This case concerns the first branch of state aid granted to Textilwerke Degendorf. In those times when this case was issued, although informed about the decision of the Commission, which, as I mentioned already before, was a negative decision, Textilwerke Degendorf did not attack the decision of the Commission. 
It just waited what's going to happen. What happened was, of course, that Germany had to recover the state aid already granted, which was illegal and which was also not compatible with the internal market. After having recovered or started the recovery procedure, Textilwerke Deggendorf went to court and attacked the decision of Germany. In the framework of this dispute, Textilwerke Deggendorf proposed to the Ger German national judge to present a preliminary ruling decision to the Court of Justice. This happened and the Court of Justice had to examine whether in such a situation it is admissible to present a pre preliminary ruling question. The reply was no and in principle the court in this judgment again uh, made some fundamental statements. As you know, we have two parallel proceedings in the treaty for attacking decisions. Either we can just directly effect, Textilwerke Degendorf could have used the present Article 263, fourth paragraph. Instead, it waited and started then a preliminary ruling procedure. The court considered that this is not admissible whenever a uh, competitor or a beneficiary would like to attack a decision and it is uh, admissible to do so, it has first to choose the direct action. Otherwise, there would be a complication around the legal security because an act which became definitive could be questioned years later. That is the substance of this jurisprudence, which is very often uh, quoted by the Court of Justice. One of the last very famous cases was the case Pringle about some actions of the European stability mechanism. Well, the most important uh, message we have to keep in mind when we think about Textilwerke Deggendorf is, of course, that it is not possible and not desirable to examine measures on their own. They always have to be seen in a context. All measures granted to one beneficiary as long as the beneficiary is in possession of this means, of these sums, has to be seen in its context when the Commission examines the impact of this subsidization on the competition and on trade between member states.